now I'd like to welcome you all to the Shawnee Mission East Area Parents Teachers Student Association Candidates Forum. Uh, my name is Mary Sinclair. I have served as the legislative chair for um, the Shawnee Mission East PTA and the co-legislative chair for the SMAC PTA along with my um, co-chair Devin Wilson. Um, uh, we um, uh, okay, so we have um, our esteemed uh, guests here today. Uh, we have 10 of our 11 candidates who are joining us, and we will be moderated today by Kyle Palmer of KCUR. Uh, the format today will begin with uh, a couple of predetermined questions, and we will kind of move down the line and come back again with our predetermined questions. And then you as audience um, will have an opportunity to submit questions as well after we've gone through the uh, preset list. Uh, Kyle Palmer, um, we are very fortunate to have him with us today. He is, um, you might hear him on the radio in the morning for the news hour through KCUR. He has a, a degree in journalism from the zoo, spent a little time at Stanford as well, earning a master's degree and um, also has a little background in sports commentary. Uh, two of my favorite sports, volleyball. My daughter plays here as the Libera, Shawnee Mission East Volleyball, and my son was a graduate of the um, Shawnee Mission East Championship, State Championship football team. Um, both of these sports, with, which Kyle has uh, commentated over the years. Um, if there are um, any uh, questions, or um, again, please write them down and uh, keep them on hold for the end of the format. I'm going to pass the microphone to Kyle. Oh, no, all right, good morning. Can you hear me? Great. All right. Um, thank you for the introduction. Thank you all for being here um, on a Saturday morning, participating in the democratic process, as it were. We have 10 candidates representing uh, four different races, a state board of education, uh, five different races, actually, state board of education, a Senate district, and three house races. We will begin just by allowing the candidates to very briefly introduce themselves. We'll go down the line from left to right as you're looking at them. Um, you can give yourself a brief introduction, say who you are, and, and of course what you're running for. Um, and then we'll get to policy positions and question answering after that. So, um, we'll start with you. Good morning. Thank you so much for hosting this. I'm excited to be here. My name is Chris Sendrick, and I'm running for the State Board of Education in District 2, and it could take all morning for me to describe those boundaries, but we're in the, we're in the middle of District 2. Um, District 2 covers four Senate areas around Johnson County and um, four school districts, parts of four school districts. Um, I am excited to be here because I worked here for such a long time. I'm a 38-year retired school psychologist and retired from Shawnee Mission Schools, and my kids graduated from here, so it is exciting, it's kind of like old home week to be back here at Shiny Mission East. I currently work as an advocate for individuals, children and young adults with developmental disabilities, getting services through can care and working just advocacy to help them live independently in their community. I am running because I feel that with my background, I could bring a unique voice to this seat I've been in the trenches for a lot of years and know how it feels to be working um, with the community, with children and families with special needs, and uh, I would love to be a voice for Shawnee Mission Schools, and thank you so much for having me here. Thank you, Chris. I'm Steve Roberts. I've served one term on the board. I'd like one more term to complete some of the projects that I've been wanting to do for my entire life like make schools work just as well for poor kids as they work for rich kids. So I didn't run for the board to make Johnson County Schools the best in Kansas. I felt that they already were. My job is to change some of the dynamics in the system so that our poor districts, our hard scrabble districts can get the quality of teaching that we've almost come to take for granted here in Johnson County, but thank goodness that we have involved citizens who do not take things for granted. So, uh, I'm a teacher. Uh, my endorsements are secondary math, physics, and earth and space science. Last year I taught at the Kickapoo Nation School in Brown County, 15 miles from Nebraska. Learned a lot about racism from a different perspective from what we usually see. 
And I do not have a classroom this year. I think Providence wanted me to campaign again for another term on your State Board of Education. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you all for being here so early on a Saturday. My name is Megan England, and I am running, I'm a Democrat running for uh, Senate District 7, which is here in Northeast Johnson <coughs> County, um, from Westwood to Leewood, uh, state line to Metcalf, um, including uh, North High as well. Um, I spent eight years on the Roland Park City Council, and so I actually have the most elected experience up here um, uh, at, this, at this table today. Uh, in Roland Park, we were able to, I championed a lot of great changes, um, and we were able to, to navigate through the Great Recession, um, going from basically a net negative to being the most successful, main one of the most successful cities in the state, um, having our property values raise 11%, and in one year, last year, and um, being the most attractive uh, for millennials uh, in the metro, the second second most attractive. Um, those are the types of, that's the type of leadership and the type of um, substantial changes I would like to make in the legislature. It's not enough to just vote yes or vote no on things. We need more champions for change. Um, you know, moderate Republicans, a lot of us up here are, are pro-education, um, but we haven't seen a lot of things happening positive for, for education in the last seven years. In fact, they've gotten worse. Uh, so it's time to have um, people who will actually be on committees and be able to create change um, and, and try to move this district forward. And uh, I would like to be that change agent. Thank you. Good morning. Prairie Island. Prairie Elementary, Indian Hills, Shawnee Mission East, KU, KU Medical School. Those were my education sources from the <coughs> great state of Kansas. I'm Barbara Bollier. I have represented District 25 and District 21 in the House of Representatives and am now running for Senate District 7 as a Republican candidate. School and excellent education is the number one issue for our constituency, period. That is what is the driving force between our economics and our communities and our entire way of life in this area, and it's what people want to see advanced, not just sustained. Uh, yes, it's true. We've had a real challenge with the governor that was elected uh, just, it seems like, forever ago. It was six years ago uh, in Toto, and it is time to see some changes occur, and many of us have been working on those, and we want to see that continue. I'm excited because, as I think many of you know, in the primary election, there were many people who uh, were elected to at least attempt to reach the state house and we have enough numbers that we are going to see some very positive changes in Topeka this next year and I am very hopeful that as we formulate a new funding formula, formula that those changes will be the uh, difference to get to 63, 21, and 1. That's the 63 votes needed in the House to pass the bill, the 21 needed in the Senate, and that one gubernatorial vote that we hope we can push forward. Thank you for taking the time to be here. It's nice to see your faces. Thank you, Barbara. Good morning, everyone. I'm Representative Stephanie Clayton. I am running for my third term, a uh, third opportunity to serve you all in the Kansas House. Throughout my tenure in the legislature, my main flagship issue that I have fought for has been transparency in government. I have really enjoyed the opportunity to sponsor and champion legislation that gains not only bipartisan, but cross-factional sponsorship. And I think that cross-factional is one of the real keys that we need to look at as we move forward in the future in the legislature, because currently, and uh, I imagine that this will change after November, but currently the House has a super, super majority of 97 Republicans and then a minority of 28 Democrats. 
If you can't work with all people across all scales, then very little can get accomplished. And so I've been very successful in establishing that one common point, and I think that that's something that we all want, which is to have government function properly, be more open to the people that we serve, and to be responsible with your tax dollars. As I move forward, and given what has occurred with the elections in August, I am very excited to say that uh, the tax plan that I have been working on, I think will really gain some traction. So I'm very optimistic about the future, and I'm really looking forward to hopefully having an opportunity to serve you for two more years. Thank you for being here this morning. Hi, I'm Liz Meidel. I'm the Democrat running for the House seat in District 19. I have two daughters in Shawnee Mission School District. Gabby is in third grade and Cora is in kindergarten at Briarwood. And I, in addition to being their mom and a wife, I'm a PhD <coughs> student at KU in the School of Education. And I also work as a technical assistance provider under a federal grant operated by the Office of Special Education Programs. And in that role, I serve individual states at the legislative and university level in an effort to improve teacher licensure and certification standards so that all teachers are prepared to serve all students. Before I was a PhD student, I was a high school English teacher and a tutor and a curriculum writer. So you can see that education is kind of my thing, which is why I'm here. I haven't had a chance to go to very many of the candidate forums or the meet and greets. But when I saw the invitation for this one, I thought, I need to be at that because the people who come to a forum about public education are thoughtful, powerful people who are going to be a part of making the future of Kansas schools better. And so this is a conversation I wanted to be a part of. I believe that Sam Brownback and the people in his camp have undermined public education, and I believe that they are attempting to create a stratified system that, de that values the rich over the poor, and I believe that they've undermined teachers and encouraged district administrators to do the same. And uh, I think we should fix that. I believe that Kansas has a rich history of serving students incredibly well and offering them great educational opportunities. We have for decades been in the top tiers of states for education, and I do not intend to see that change while my students are in public school, my children are in public school nor do I want that to happen to the children that will come after them. So I'm extremely grateful to the Supreme Court of Kansas for keeping the undermining at bay, but major damage has been done, and the repair work needs to begin. And I believe the repair work starts at events like these, and so I'm grateful that you're here, and I'm grateful to be here, and I'm looking forward to this conversation. Thank you. My name is John Tavi, and I am the Libertarian candidate for House District 19. I actually ran as a Libertarian because I wanted to have a chance to be more uh, bipartisan because I was brought into politics through the GOP, through Ronnie Metzger in 2012, where I worked on many campaigns and volunteered a lot of my time. And uh, I've decided that this is my chance to uh, speak my voice for young people who are from this district. I was raised in this district. I went to Trailwood Elementary, I went to Mission Valley, and I actually went to East here my, my freshman year and finished up at South. And I gotta say, this place is just as intimidating as it was my first day. So I am really glad to be here because I see that you know our students, even though we have the best education in Kansas here, it is a challenge, it's intimidating to be here. And we need to make sure our students have all the resources they need to be successful when they graduate. Because unfortunately, and I know this because I am one generation out of graduating from these schools, that other friends of mine who didn't go to college are basically working minimum wage jobs. And I think we can all agree that our high school education can provide us much better than that. So my concern for education is that uh, funding be adequate, but that we also increase the um, the capabilities of our students when they graduate. I believe that high school students are capable and smart enough to come out into the workforce with certifications that give them well-paying jobs. We want them to stay around and we don't want them to leave. I left and I came back and I'm glad to be here. I have two children. I have one with special needs. 
and they go to Briarwood Elementary. And I am very grateful for this great public system because as um, a contractor and a self-employed man, I cannot afford better services, but I'm grateful that the public services here are the best. But I still think that we've got to think more in the future. We've got to compete globally, and we've got to lead the way that our students come out of school here right now. Thank you for your time, and I'm looking forward to talking about all these issues today. I'm Jerry Stogstall, and uh, appreciate you all being here this morning. Uh, every time I come to East, it's like coming home, just like uh, Chris down at the end of the table. I've spent a lot of time in this building. Uh, I have a lot of experience and uh, expertise in the area of public education. And uh, actually, my wife was the uh, head of counseling here for 14 years. And uh, I was, uh, our son went to East, graduated in 2010. I was on the PTA board, treasurer, and we were solvent the entire year, never went bankrupt. And, uh, but I have a, uh, a kind of unique background in public education. Uh, two of my three degrees from Kansas State uh, are in education. I have a bachelor's in elementary education and a master's degree in curriculum and instruction. Uh, I was a teacher in Shawnee Mission for 12 years. Uh, I was down there in the trenches with the kids. I know what, what challenges uh, teachers face every day in their classrooms and uh, what kind of support they need uh, to be as effective as they can in those classrooms. I was elected three times by my peers to serve as president of NEA Shawnee Mission, where I was uh, involved heavily in issues like due process and collective bargaining. Uh, I was in a leadership position that uh, achieved 10 collective bargaining agreements between the teachers and the school district here in Shawnee Mission. And uh, I was uh, maybe most important, a parent at, uh, that uh, helped guide a, a child through the entire Shawnee Mission School District. And he got a great, great education. He just received his master's degree from the University of Arkansas and I think gave Shawnee Mission East the, uh, the best possible uh, uh, kudos it could receive. He said, uh, Dad, I tell you, after going to Shawnee Mission East, my freshman year at Arkansas was a piece of cake. And that's how good a school we're sitting in right now. But there's a tremendous amount of, of problems facing our schools. It's been basically uh, uh, caused over the last six years by this administration and by their uh, totally complicit uh, loyalists in the legislature. It's time for a change, and I think I have the qualifications and experience and background to uh, help bring about those types of changes. So uh, again, I appreciate you all being here, and uh, I'm the pro-public education Democrat running for the Kansas House of Representatives from the 21st District here in Northeast Johnson County. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Dorothy Hughes, and I am the Republican pro-education candidate in District 21. Uh, thank you all for taking time out of your busy weekends to be here. Um, everyone in the district, what I hear going door to door, they want good schools, uh, and they are willing to invest in them. It's crucial that we continue to invest in public education. Um, a little bit about me. I am currently a part-time healthcare consultant and working on my PhD in health policy and management. Um, I'm also on the adjunct faculty at the School of Business in Rock at Rockhurst University. Um, I have spent about 14 years in policy, first starting at the federal level, handling mostly health and education issues. Uh, and then I advocated for KU Medical Center and KU Hospital. Um, healthcare and higher education, um, I've been very fortunate to work in those fields because those are fields that ought not be partisan issues. And I'm very thankful to have worked across the spectrum already, across my career, um, to get things done that are good for students <coughs> and education professionals. Um, and I'm really looking forward to the opportunity uh, to do that in Topeka as well. Uh, I think we all want change who are up here. We're looking for good results uh, for our public schools. And I think what you'll hear today is that we may differ on how to get there, uh, but we're all in it for the students, the teachers, the education community, so that we can bolster our great community as a whole here. So thank you for being here. And thank you very much. My name is Melissa Rooker. I represent the 25th district, which is state line to Lamar, 47th Street to 67th Street. There are eight cities in Northeast Johnson County that fall into that house district. 
our home probably displays four high school diplomas from this building. My husband and I are both East alum, and we, um, the two of us went through KU together, and when we got married, um, we spent, we moved to California to pursue my husband's career interests. The two of us ended up working for 15 years for Clint Eastwood. I became the VP of development for the company. I retired in 2001 to stay home and take care of the two children that I'd had along the way, one of whom is here. Um, and. It was a, a, a goal of ours to bring our children back here so that they too could enjoy the, the excellent public schools that, that we, we grew up with. And it was a very deliberate decision to pick up roots, move halfway across the country, purchase a house six doors down from my mother and father so that my two children could come to the same schools that, that I had enjoyed myself. That was probably the best decision that we made as, as a family. It, it made all the difference to move into a community that values public education. Um, the year we, we made that move, our, our own district in Los Angeles failed to pass a bond measure for the third consecutive time that would have built a new high school uh, to accommodate the over 5,000 students that were crammed into a building that was built for 3,500. So it wasn't tax policy, it wasn't anything but quality of life measures and, and excellent public schools that brought us back home. My husband is an independent film producer and the, the center of his professional universe remains Los Angeles to this day. Um, when I was first elected in 2012, I, had, I was coming out of work through the PTA, this organization has a very strong history in advocacy that is the genesis of, of the, the PTA and I was very proudly serving at that in 2012 right up until I filed to be a candidate I was a part of the Kansas PTA legislative team I was on the SMAC PTA I was the, the legislative chair for, for SMAC PTA and I was working in the buildings my, my children were in as the legislative chair. So I've been following the, the evolution of the school finance battle since roughly 2005 when Montoy was coming to a head and actively engaged in, in the policy side of, of that um, as an advocate. I'm very proud to serve in the legislature um, on a number of different committees that deal with entirely different policy areas, transportation, public safety, infrastructure, are the, the set of, of policy arenas that I've been engaged in through my committee work for the last two years. However, I, I remain in the forefront of the battles that were waged over education policy and um, led the charge in solving the equity piece of the Gannon lawsuit this summer during special session. I drafted the legislation that became the um, actual bill that, that was passed and received by the court to discharge that half of the lawsuit. So um, there was a concept in a leadership development program that I went through as a freshman lawmaker, the Kansas Leadership Center offers. Uh, the, the most resonant element of that program is, is one of their precepts that leadership is an activity, not a position. And I, I live by that. And I, I serve my district to the best of my abilities and, and, and try and lead by example on a daily basis. This will be a terrific discussion today. Thank you for being here. And then we also have a statement from um, another member of the Race and House District 25 that Mary will read. So um, Matt McCann is, was not able to uh, attend today. He is running in the House District 25 um, along with uh, Melissa Rooker. Uh, he, so I invited him to submit a statement, and I'm going to go ahead and read that. Um, he is traveling for a friend's wedding this weekend. Um, if uh, any interested parties want to learn more about his position, uh, you can look to mattmccann.org. At his website, or he also has a Facebook page, McCann for House 25. Um, he, uh, his concern, his statement with Kansas school funding is paramount. is a paramount issue in this campaign season. Um, uh, Matt McCann is concerned about a conservative agenda 
and its failure of uh, massive proportions. Um, he was talking about our schools have been systematically funded. He believes it is a conservative effort to privatize the institution. Uh, he's concerned the wealthy don't want to pay for public schools, they want to make money off them instead. Um, that statement is this is a litany, this litany of conservative ideas must be fought, and whether he is elected or not, he intends to allow this fight back again. All right, so let's begin um, the forum. This will be divided into two um, sections. Uh, the first will be uh, predetermined questions that I will pull out of this Shawnee Mission East Lancer hat, which I have, <laughs> I have been told is a state championship hat, um, based on the performance last night against North. That might not be wrong. Um, there are 20 questions in this hat. Um, since the microphone's already down there, we'll begin down there with uh, Melissa Rooker. Uh, come down one by one, and then actually go back down the line so each candidate will get two randomly selected questions. Uh, these have been written by the Shawnee Mission East uh, PTSA uh, in a predetermined way. If you see me draw out a question and then put a question back, um, it's not because I'm trying to pull a out an hour. It is because um, some of these questions are written specifically for the State Board of Education, so they may not be relevant or as relevant for uh, representatives and senators. Um, so if you see me do that, that is because I've made the determination, well, they're actually, they're already the State Board of Education questions. Um, so let's go ahead and begin. Each <coughs> candidate will get two minutes to respond. I don't know if we have a timekeeper, but we have a, we have a timekeeper. So um, she will give you... Um, there, there's a sound on my phone. Okay. And so I'll will. give you one minute, 30 seconds, 15 seconds sign. Uh, that's just for logistical purposes so that we can all um, hear from each of the candidates since there are 10 of you, as well as uh, for fairness purposes as well. So let's begin with Melissa Rooker. First question drawn out of the hat. How would you rate Kansas public schools along a continuum from highly efficient to wasteful, and why? Well, I, the, the mantra is that we have inefficiency in our schools, and that's the key to actually directing resources into the classroom, and there's so much to unpack there. Our schools have been operating in an environment of scarcity since the recession era cuts driven um, mid-year through the, the budget process when I was first doing advocacy work 2008 and 9, the recession caused cuts. Schools have been struggling to make ends meet since those cuts and we have, we have cut their funding, um, the operating funding to those school districts ever since. Um, multiple times. So I would say school districts have had to adapt to the changing environment. They have created ways of coping and leveraging the resources they have. We have seven service centers in the state that provide some of the, the what some of my colleagues call the backroom operations, payroll, purchasing, legal services, professional development. So we have a lot of sharing of resources around the state that doesn't get a lot of publicity. We have co-ops that, that leverage the special education services out where it's harder to, to, to put those in place in each district. We have had very, very effective ways of, uh, and creative ways of, of delivering services in, in a, a different manner, looking differently at how we leverage technology in our classrooms. And I think our school districts have been doing a tremendous job. They've had to spend down reserve funds, they've had to cut staff, and they've had to cut programs. But through it all, we've maintained excellence in the outputs, the, the graduation rates, and achievement scores in this country. And when we're ranked, we are in the top 10 to 15. Nobody spends less than us who ranks above us, and um, so it, you know, money matters. Thank you. Uh, I will also say we're going to, each of you is going to get two questions, one down the line and then back down the line, and then there will be a chance to respond either to if, if someone has mentioned you or a policy that you want to respond to specifically or if you just want to add or um, elucidate something that you've already said. That will be selected out of this random Shawnee Mission East Lancer coffee mug. Um, that will come after you both, uh, you all answer two questions each. So now let's move on to um, House District 21. Another question. 
And the number of poor living in Johnson County has more than doubled since 2000. The percentage of Shawnee Mission students eligible for free and reduced lunch has increased to 37%, rising from 33% in 2011. How will you, as state legislator, help build the district's capacity to meet the educational needs of this growing student population? So for me, the word capacity speaks to resources. So I think this goes to the heart of what we'll be working on in the upcoming session a new funding formula um, and making sure that that is adequate, uh, equitable, and uh, allows some local flexibility as well. Um, I serve on the board of the Friends of the Library and we, we talk about early education and literacy efforts a lot and we talk about the fact that poverty here in Johnson County um, is perhaps less visible than elsewhere, but that doesn't mean that it's not here. It's very important that we recognize uh, the needs of all students and make sure that we are um, taking care of everyone. Um, so I intend in the legislature to make sure that I am listening to the education community about what the needs are, what resources they need to make sure that all students are taken care of, um, and that we have a formula that works, that works for them and works for us here in Shawnee Mission. Thank you. Uh, the next question. <clears throat> state statute calls for the State Board of Education to review and revise the state education standards every seven years. At present, Kansas is in the middle of the review process for mathematics and English language arts, which were initially implemented in 2010. In your opinion, what is the role of the Kansas legislature in the process of determining state education standards and K-12 curriculum? What is your position on the continued use of the Common Core state standards? Well, I think uh, one of the things that the uh, Kansas legislature needs to do is to uh, uh, do its job and let the uh, Kansas Board of Education do its job and let the Kansas Supreme Court do its job and there seems to be uh, some uh, uh, question in the Kansas legislature at this point as to what their job really is. Uh, I think it is the, uh, we elect the Kansas State Board of Education to make those kinds of decisions for education in Kansas and the legislature needs to help them implement those, uh, uh, those positions and so on. And uh, I think the, uh, uh, just a word about the Supreme Court, I think that the, they, uh, uh, the Supreme Court has done Kansas a wonderful job uh, over the last couple of years in actually uh, doing their job and saying, this is wrong, this is right, that's what our three uh, uh, party or parts of our government are supposed to do. And uh, I think the uh, uh, common core uh, positions uh, are uh, uh, important. I think that uh, there should be local control over what we, uh, uh, to, the, to the most extent possible, of what we uh, are able to uh, uh, present in our public schools and so on. But uh, I think the, uh, uh, the legislature basically needs to stop meddling in the Kansas Board of Education and with our Supreme Court. And uh, I think the, uh, uh, we're doing a great job uh, with the system that we have. We just have to let it work and make sure everybody does their job. Thank you. Moving on to House District 19. Kansas is experiencing a teacher shortage in some areas of the state. In your opinion, what has the state legislature done anything to affect teacher retention and recruitment in the past few years? To what extent does the Kansas legislature have a responsibility to help rate, retain and recruit highly qualified teachers to public schools? Thank you. I, I think the question meant to say if